up everyone it is your girl jail beauty 7 here aka grace we got a whole bunch of new stuff to try out today so i thought we'd try something different kind of like a get ready with me or whatever with um a topic because this is a topic i wanted to talk about more in depth i talked about it in the um what do you call it um the artist couture video about how makeup revolution one of the only thought it was a good idea to you know um Say that people look like you need to go back to Africa, or he he agreed with the comment at least where someone said that we need to go back to Africa just because they asked if he had it, um, if the brand that Makeup Revolution just started was owned by a black person since it was profiting off of a black artist. So anyway, we're gonna try out all these new things. I got the Jacqueline stuff. I ended up getting the powder and the setting spray. I got the new um, Manny Inway blush palette. I got this new photo finish revitalize eight in one primer essence that I want to try out. And then I'm just gonna use the old foundation and I got the new Royal Bronzer. So I think we can try out all this stuff in this video. And you know, I can talk to the people who look like me who he told they need to go back to Africa and see what y'all think about this. And then you can get my opinion of what I think about it moving forward and how I'm going to perceive the brand moving forward. So let's get started. We're gonna start with this primer. But yeah, so if you all remember, if you watch my video on the Art Couture, I'll try to link it up here, but I linked the video where I found out about the situation because a lot of other people weren't talking about it. Oh, it's a priming, so you have to use it as a spray for a priming. Hmm, interesting, because I didn't open this box at all until I got with you all, which I'm excited about. It says, to use whole bottle eight to ten inches away from face and mist onto skin even. So, let's see. Okay, it's a nice smooth mist if y'all you see that. I was thinking it was gonna be more of like a rub to your face primer, so that is interesting. But since it says the essence, um, but I was thinking about the essence like fresh essence where you just dab it in your hands and press into your skin. So maybe I should try to press this into my skin. This is a primer, but anyway. So um yeah, but if you are, we're gonna take the Dior foundation today because I've been using it forever and I feel like I should be using it more often. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna just take the yellow um, essence, I mean Elf, and get it together. But yes, like I was saying, um, a girl asked in Trim's comment section, she was like, you know, um, I hope this is a um, black-owned brand since you know they're profiting off, profiting off of an African American artist. And some girls told her, and I quote then go back to Africa, it's not that serious. And one of the owners of the brand, or co-founders of Howard, went again, I will link the girl who made the video down below because she has way more information on this than I do. But um, he likes the comment from his work account. So it shows that you work with or work for Revolution and thought it was a good idea to make that comment or like that comment. So I was just like, okay. Cause first of all, we all know their products are hit and miss, and to me, they're just mediocre. Like some stuff is will be really good, and then the majority of it will be crap. And a lot of other people have been saying that anyway. So of course, all of us were sad when they bought um, BH Cosmetics, since they actually have good products, and we haven't seen anything come from BH Cosmetics since. So I don't know what's going on with that, but I'll touch on um, moving forward with what I ex think about the BH cosmetic situation too but I want to get my main thoughts in about what I feel about him thinking was the idea to like a comment disrespecting essentially your consumers why would that ever be a good idea especially since you try to be inclusive by making all these foundation shades and all this other stuff but then I need to go back to Africa you can't have it both ways you're either going to be inclusive and you know not be stupid enough to let us know you're not really inclusive and you're just in it for a buck. Cause I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of companies that are just in it for a buck, but why did you think it was a good idea to let all the people that look like me know that you're just in it for a buck? Cause now that I know you're just in it for a buck and your inclusivity is not genuine and sincere, it's like there are plenty of other brands out here that do cater to people that look like me and they're not, you know, out here liking comments about me needing to go back to Africa. So needless to say, I personally don't plan on buying anything from them. Because I just thought that was so tacky and so, you know, tactless. And then the fact that he never, like, commented on it or, like, said it was a mistake or unlike the tweet. I mean, not tweet, but comment on Trimble's page, you know, that that's just how he feels about people that 
look like me and a lot of my viewers and a lot of other African Americans um, that have viewers. So that's why I wanted to touch on it deeper because I'm like, I just don't see where his thought process was with that. Like what, what was the idea? What was the point? And then now let's get to the um, beige cosmetic situation. It's like, we bought beige cosmetics and Personally, I, all of us were already sad about it because it's like they already had good forms and everything going on. So it's like I could see why you want to buy BH Cosmetics because at the end of the day, their products and stuff were better than yours and they were more reasonable price. They just didn't have the money to continue on. So, you know, it was mutually beneficial to everyone, at least when we thought it was going to be. However, I don't know as an African American if I want to buy anything for BH Cosmetics now knowing that they're run by these racist people. So, Moving forward, I don't know how I'm going to be, or if you're going to get any reviews on the new BH stuff versus the old BH stuff. Because I'm like, since I, I'm using a YSL concealer by the way, I'm like, because since that's how you feel, you let it know that that's how you feel. And not that I'm trying to say cancel culture or anything, but at the same time, I'm like, I have the right to know where my money is going if my money is going toward a racist and I don't want to give it to a racist. And now that I know that you are a racist, I have the right to keep it in my pocket. So I'm personally not gonna buy anything and I'm not gonna promise you that I'll give you any new content concerning BH Cosmetics if they do put out things in BH Cosmetics or if they just do BH Cosmetics formulas to make their own formulas better. I don't plan on showing you anything else from you know the brand because I'm like, why should I give you free publicity when I need to go back to Africa? But that was just my spill. And then I wanted to kind of dive into like a lot of their different brands. Because it's like, you have 40 brands as it is. So what do we need this other one for just dedicated to, you know, exploiting people to look like me while they need to go back to Africa? Because you let off with a brand. Um, I mean, let off your brand with an artist who looks like me, but I need to go back to Africa while you profit off of him. So you need to profit off the person who looks like me, but I need to go back to Africa. So if he hadn't went back to Africa, you wouldn't be able to profit off anything, right? Because he wouldn't have been here to make music he made and be the icon he was in order for you to profit off him. But somehow the people who look like him need to go back to Africa, but it's okay for you to profit off of him. Where? Excuse me? What? Then there's all their other brands, cause it's like, I feel like they'll just make a brand off anything. Like they tried to make a disc rock and roll brand. They're trying to claim they're being more sustainable with another brand. But like Tina the Fancy Face has said in the past, like you not making a brand at all would be more sustainable. And the fact that you already have 40 of them and then you came out with another one just to um, claim it has sustainable packaging and all that. Why don't you just make sustainable packaging with your other um, brands? So it's showing us they're not making sound and smart decisions that it is. Because they come out with these 50 million different brands and then have one that's supposed to be sustainable. But all the other ones are still, you know, clogging the earth with pollution and all these extra things that you're making and constantly having 40 different brands. To, and then everything is just mediocre or there's a few hits in each one. It's like, why don't you just make hits in each one and calm down the waste that you're creating? So you're creating waste. You're disrespecting cultures of people. Then you're buying more of brands to create more waste, essentially. I mean, I know we're all glad that BH will still exist, but it's like, in what capacity will they exist? It might not even be BH Cosmetics anymore. It might just be BH Cosmetics by Revolution. And we don't know what that's going to consist of. So I wasn't super excited about that either. But, you know, yeah. So those are pretty much the majority of my thoughts on it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I'm going to read into the other things that I tried that is new. That's why I started off with the um, older things. And plus, I was just interested in that primer, so I think we start off with that. But uh, you can let me know down below what you think. Now we're going to mainly start like the review stuff because I'm getting to the Jaclyn powder. But right now, I'm just using the Huda um, Beauty Banana Powder. Well, I'm sorry, Kunafa Powder underneath my eyes. Yeah, I thought it was real interesting, especially since I haven't really heard anyone talking about that situation that happened. So it's like we're just gonna scoop on this rug and 
no one's going to be informed about it. I'm like, my audience is going to be informed about it if no one else is. Just because, um, that's how you bought, um, British Catholic, doesn't mean I'm going to, um, you know, tolerate you telling me I need to go back to that. But what's your 40 million brand causing so much waste on the world? I'm actually liking this foundation today, and I normally don't. I don't know if it's because of the primer essence, or if it's because I just put enough yellow in the foundation to where it doesn't look orange. Because to me today, it doesn't look orange. It normally does, so I'm not super happy about that. Okay, let's actually start reviewing some stuff now, as opposed to talking about Makeup Revolution's bad bag. So... Got this powder here, it's called Powder Move Loose Setting Powder. Now, this is supposed to be a sheer powder, and you can at the top that it's sheer. So I brought the shade Deep. It comes in the, you know, the standard square packaging thing with the, um, on the top. It's actually deeper than I expected it to be, but since it's not adding any more coverage, I feel like it should be fine. And it might help with the um, redness of the powder. I believe this was $30, so I have to go check on Ulta's website real quick and see. But I believe this was 30 and I think the setting spray was another price. Let's check. Okay, yeah, so the powder was 30 bucks and the setting spray was 28. Speed up on this powder real quick. It says. Jacqueline Cosmetics Powder Moves Loose Setting Powder Blurs and Smooths the Appearance of Skin While Setting Makeup with a Soft Focus Finish and Subtle Radius. Good for skin ingredients like squalene help lock in moisture while a key amino acid and aloe vera deliver a silky feel while calming skin. It blends easily, it's high pigmented coverage, and it's radiant finish. But I thought she said that it was supposed to be sheer, so it's like, I was giving it high radiant coverage. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, let's read up on the setting spray now. It says, all setting spray. It says, set and forget it with the Jacqueline Cosmetics all setting spray. The super fine facial mist primes, sets, conditions, and protects your look with a nourishing blend of lavender oil, coconut oil, seawater, peppermint oil, and Maringo Sea extract with a natural finish prime set and condition skin super fine mist infused with five nourishing oils so i think i'm gonna have to set my face with something else and this will just be the one that i spray to um press the um powder into my skin because with all these oils and me having oily skin this is not for me in that regard so that's good because i bought the um laura mercier um translucent pure setting spray it's invisibly hydrating setting spray and it has um and it's supposed to have 16 hour wear and I wanted to try this out too. So now I can try out both because we'll finish my face off with that one and then we'll use this one to actually set my makeup. So we'll try out two setting sprays today. I don't ever think I'll try the Jacqueline one in that um in the way that um, they're saying I can do to finish my face just because of how many oils are in it. But I have to remember Jacqueline has dry skin which means her mom probably has dry skin as well. Okay, let's get into this powder now because that's what I was curious about. I didn't buy one for underneath the eyes, I just stuck to the one, one on the face. But I was like, 30 bucks for each one would have been like a pretty penny, and I'd rather see how it's gonna set my face as a whole as opposed to, you know. Plus, I'll be able to go through it quicker if it's setting my whole face as opposed to just setting underneath my eyes. So, just in case I didn't like it and it didn't come in a smaller size, I wanted to be able to try it out in that regard. skin looking darker and I was concerned about it because the powder looks much darker but since it's sheer and just supposed to be kind of radiant I guess I understand why it's not making it darker and I'm fine with that because I 
was concerned about which shade I bought once I saw like the actual packaging because you know how it looks online versus in store and hers you can't pick up in store you have to buy online and then they deliver it so let's get on this setting spray and see how the mystery goes okay so it has a nice mystery to it but again since it has all these oils in it I'm not just mm. So I smell the peppermint oil. I don't smell the lavender under. I smell like a slight hint of lavender. I'm glad it's not overpowering because I actually don't like the smell of lavender. And this we just press the powder into the skin that we just put on. And I'll do that one more time before I'm going over everything, and then we can use the um, more Mercedes one on top. But that one retails for 20 bucks. I'll um, read that one when we get to the very end. And then I have the L'Oreal bronzer, so let's look that up now because I usually bronze my face after I get done with this part, as you all know. Okay, so this is the infallible 24 hour fresh wear soft matte bronzer. So I feel like they just went with the soft um, wear 24 hour thing since that's the foundation that they came out with, the fresh water that everybody loves. So I feel like they just added that name on to make sure people would get it, but maybe it's just me. Anyways, it's Demand More From Long Wear with the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Soft Matte Bronzer. This natural looking bronzer comes in a diverse range of shades and gives buildable coverage and a soft matte finish. It gives skin bronze, sun-kissed dimension, heat-proof, waterproof, sweat-proof, and transfer-proof. It's lightweight and natural, looking for up to 24-hour wear. And it retails for $15.99. That's the only thing that I was like, wait, what? It's $15. It's a bronzer. And I just had to, like, reevaluate my life. Like, hold up. This, this, this bronzer is this $16 from the drugstore? Like, to me, that's a lot. But again, I'm happy that it exists. Because, you know, the brand we were just talking about actually makes really good drugstore bronzers or drugstore priced bronzers. But it's like, I need to go back to Africa so I don't need to buy anything from you. So, like, God made it to where I could buy this one. And even though it's smaller, it's, you know, they are not telling me I need to go back to Africa. So, I'm, I'm going to stick with them. Let's see how this goes. Now, it's looking a little red in the pan. I got the shade deep, by the way, if anyone was curious. Oh, okay. It's giving pigment and I didn't pick up that much. Only thing is it has that perfumey smell that, you know, all L'Oreal's things tend to have. Or at least it feels like their powders have, so. But everything's going over the um, Jaclyn powder nice and smooth. As y'all saw, I put it up here because I didn't put on a cream. Um, bronze the way I normally do. Now I'm trying to rush because Adrian Gamer and I have to go to um, see a movie tonight. And although it's 12.30, it's like I still need to get home, like try to shower. I still need to film a Jack and Hill video today and then try to go home and edit it before we go to the movie. So I'm kind of over here on a time rush. And I got like three videos of him. It's 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm like, I need to hurry up and get this done. Because I still need to go home and then take the boy to the movies later on tonight mom life on the weekends versus mom life for the weekend. We just have to get them to school and back home and then go to work. At least for me. So I'm liking where the bronze looks. You all tell me down below. I feel like it is a nice soft matte looking finish. It gave good coverage. My only complaint is $16 and it's so tiny because it's 0 0.31 ounces. I'm going to have to check my other bronzer sizes and see how they compare. So yeah. But you know. Anyway, let's move on to this blush palette. So we got the Manny NUA um, New Prism Blush Palette. Y'all know I wasn't going to get the eyeshadow palette because it was like really nude or whatever. I saw some people got it in the PR and they talked about it. I'm still waiting on Babs Beauty to talk about it though in the blush palette because I was excited to hear her thoughts about it. But I'm like, she still hasn't done it and I'm like, I, I got to use it eventually. So what I'm going to do is, um, I kind of want to use this mauve shade right here. But because of the eye looks, I'm doing... I figure I'll go between this pink and this orange and see what kind of look I get with those because since I'm doing the beauty color block ones, I'm kind of thinking about doing the orange blush. So I think I'll start off with blaze and if I don't feel like it's giving enough of what I want, then we'll put the uh, 
call her kawaii on top okay so it's looking nice like it always does it's blending smoothly it's giving a decent amount of pigmentation Besides this eyeshadow palette, I feel like Mandy does everything well. I never tried the highlighters. Everybody raved about them, but I have never tried his highlighters. So I'm like, maybe I should try them since Teresa did keep raving about them. And I think I heard that beauty raving about them as well. I was looking at the shade Mars because it was like an orangish type of um, peachy-ish um, shade. And I like peachy gold highlighters. I'm not really into the champagne or the traditional gold. But I like peachy ones and bronze ones. So, if I had to try one, that would be the one I would try. I saw that they're not on... Um, was it Beauty Bay anymore? So I guess he's leaving Beauty Bay just like um Kirsten Dominique or Dominique Cosmetics is leaving Beauty Bay. So I probably have to go to his website and try to pick up a highlighter. But the only thing is people say they're always sold out, so I'm like, um, okay. Okay. I'm just trying to see how much pigmentation I can build up because when you have a skin tone like mine, sometimes you you have to build it up, especially just one of those forms where you have to build up and manny's is a form you have to build up. So I'm trying to build up to as intense as I would like it and as usual, it's building up nicely. It looks nice on the skin, so. I'ma just put on a highlighter from um, the last time I uh, did a video like this where I've used a whole bunch of products. Um, so I think that was the battle of the blush video. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Guilty Pleasure again from Colourpop just cause I don't have any other ones sitting around me. This one is conveniently located. We just trying to get stuff done over here, so. Plus I liked the color of this one from what I remember, so. I'm waiting for my Winnie the Pooh stuff to come. Yes, I did buy the Winnie the Pooh palette and I bought one of the highlighters. And I had to buy the honey pots. I just had to, I'm sorry. There's no shame in my game. Now I do it again. Hear me? I would do it again. Okay, so as you can see, it's giving a nice little highlighter well. Nice. And I think it's a pretty color that works nicely with my skin tone. But sometimes when I buy um, these, I'll be scared of like, is the color gonna work? It's gonna look good though? I don't know. But so far I'm liking Jacqueline's powder. I don't know about the spray, just because again, it has those oils in it and I have oily combination skin, so I don't need a whole bunch of these oils. But I'm always intrigued by a setting spray and a um, powder, so we will see how it goes. I mean, it set my makeup in nice, as far as you know with the powder and trying to make it blend into the skin more naturally it did a great job with that but I just don't see myself using this as a setting spray on its own so I might end up returning the setting spray to be honest just because it has all those oils in it and I remember her saying in the video that it had a whole bunch of oils in it so It's not something that I would have bought knowing what I do now. But, you know, at the same time, just because I watched her video doesn't mean that she's going to give me all the insight. I should have read in the description that it said it had all these oils in it. But again, either way, I wanted to review it for you all. So I have done that and given you my thoughts on it. So there you go. We're going to spray my face now. We got everything on it. Like I said, it's not necessarily that it's bad. It's just because I already have oily skin. It's the product I have to most likely use like in the wintertime. And I don't want it to sit all summer long when I can just, you know, lose all my stuff and we're already in spring. So it's not going to be a product I'm going to use a lot unless I'm using it like this. And I have plenty of other sprays to use like this. Like I still need to finish my Patrick Tyler and Patrick Tox King. So. Okay, yeah. y'all, so we're pretty much done with our face. We need to use the Laura Mercier one now. So we're going to read up on that one. And then that'll be the last one I um, use for this video. And then I will come and check in with you all at the end of the night. Will I? Wait, no, I don't need to check in with y'all at the end of the night. Unless you want to see how the setting spray lasts throughout the night. So I might do it for that reason. But here it is. It says, from the number one setting brand, Laura Mercier's Translucent Pure Setting Spray 16 Hour with no performance or Skin sacrifice. Okay, so that's what they laid off with. The benefits are a skin comforting formula. 87% of customers agree this setting spray feels comfortable on the skin. Weightless feel. 86% of customers agree that this setting spray feels weightless on the skin. Looks invisible. 94% of consumers agree this setting spray does not disturb or change the finish of makeup underneath. Um, immediate shine control 77% of customers agree this setting spray immediately controls the appearance of shine in a day sorry in one day customers perception study of 31 subjects 
So its plant-derived matrix provides a breathable barrier against pollutants and helps lock in makeup for 16 hours. It has flowers that help soothe and nurture as well as protect skin and glyceric infused water provides a refreshing feel. So this the big one retails for 38. I bought the small one that they sell at Sephora for 20 bucks. So let's see what the mist looks like on this one. Okay, so it's giving did y'all see? It's giving it a decent amount of mist. I feel like you didn't see it because it's so fine, but So I did my normal four sprays. And it does feel cooling on the skin. I don't feel like it's tightening or anything, but I, I definitely feel the cooling of it. And it does feel nice to the skin like I just read. So those two things are to be true. But yeah, um, let me know down below your thoughts about um, the topic we talked about today while I was starting to get ready before I started the review portion of this video. But I'd love to hear what you think about this makeup revolution situation. Because I feel like they just tried to hide and other people just stuck it underneath the rug and nobody's really talking about why they thought, you know, it was a good idea to agree with someone telling their potential consumer base that, you know, they should go back to Africa and they should like the comic. I, to me, the thought process just wasn't there. Oh, by the way, I meant to show y'all the difference between Manny's old palette versus his new palette. So, this is his old palette and this is his new palette, as you see. I feel like there's subtle differences, like he used a couple more brighter colors than he normally does. I don't know if that was supposed to offset because the palette was so neutral that he used some brighter colors with the um, blushes, but he did and I am here for it. So that's why I made sure I used one of those since all the other ones always have. Um, all The original palette had deeper shades in it. I mean, just all lighter shades in it and there weren't any deep, punchy, really bright shades. So there you go. Anyway, I will talk with you all later on tonight when we talk about how the setting spray um, wears. I feel like it's actually tightening my face a little bit. That setting spray that I put on, I don't know if it's tightening it because we combined it with the Jaclyn Hill one. That's the only thing. Because since I pushed that one in and then we turned around and used the Laura Mercier, it could be because of that. I'm not entirely sure, but you know that there you go. Um, I will check in with you all later, okay? Okay. So I have returned after many hours of wear. In my social life setting points. This is what our face is looking like with the 16 hour setting spray from, what do you call it, um, Laura Mercier. If you all can't tell, I use both the um, color block eyeshadow palettes from Huda Beauty. So that's what's going on with the eyes. That's why we're looking crazy with two different eye looks. But you know, I, I can't help that. She came up with two palettes and you know, I didn't have time for all that. I had to take Adrian Game over to see the movie Bad Guys because last week when it came out, he was with his dad. And I know he told me he wanted to see it, so mommy had to take him for that hashtag mom life. Um, so let's look at our pores real quick, because we were testing some other stuff too. Like, I tested the bronzer from um, L'Oreal, so let's check both sides of the face for that. I think the bronzer actually looks really nice, and it lasted a really long time, like it said it would. The setting spray actually lasted pretty well too. I'm not really going to touch on the Jaclyn Hill setting spray, because I actually returned that, like... Um, when I got home, because if you all didn't know, there's an Ulta Beauty literally around the corner from my house. Because there's a whole strip mall behind, like, my backyard. Um, so, I took that back. I feel like it did an okay job to set my powders, but you have to think about how many setting sprays I have to set my powders. Because I test lots of makeup products. So, I took it back because it has five different oils in it. And when summer comes, it would serve no purpose for me. But I did want to test it for you all. And I think it works fine if you, are like me, have oily combination skin and just need something to set your face. But for $28, honey, you can find something that's cheaper to set your face. And I have to worry about a whole bunch of oils, like, in your skin. I feel like for people with oily combination skin, that would be a better product for you to get in the wintertime. And I doubt it'll still be available in the wintertime because it's supposed to be a limited edition collection with her mom. So just keep that in mind when you're trying it if you have oily combination skin like myself. Now, the setting powder, I am a fan of. Like, look how nice my face looks on both sides. I did kind of halfway fall asleep on this side, which is why right here it seems like there's some missing. But as you can see on this side, it's just fine because, you know, I didn't fall asleep on that side. So I think the powder works fine. It gives sheer coverage, but it does give a nice little radiance to it. And it does set the face, which at the end of the day is supposed to be a setting powder. So that's its job. So I think it did that just fine. Now, as far as blurring goes, I don't feel like it did that great a job. Oh, sorry. I didn't think it did that great a job when it came to blurring. But then again, that's because, um, you know, I didn't put it in places where it has large pores where it needs to be blurred. I don't have large pores around this area of my face. Around the perimeter where I bought the shade that works for my face. 
or for the um, majority of my face, the place I would have needed to buy it in order to test for pores, in my personal opinion, would have been the part right here where my pores are. Since there are pores around here that are significantly large, I can't say that it does the um, burn pore claim because there aren't large pores on the perimeter of my face. But I think it's a good powder all the same. It was sheer. If you like a sheer setting powder that um, gives a nice little bit of radiance to it and still sets your makeup, then it'd be fine for that. But for 30 bucks, I feel like you can find one cheaper that does the same thing. Because I personally like the one from Essence that's only $5.99. And I feel like it did the same thing as that. And I feel like it might actually give a little bit of coverage. Whereas this one is sheer and it's not going to give you any coverage whatsoever. Um, the setting spray, I feel like, did an excellent job. I mean, like, I have oily combination skin and I wore a mask. And I fell asleep with this on. So, I feel like my shine is very minimal, all things considered. I try to sit where the light was sitting, hitting me directly in the face. Because the light bulb is right here. And I'm sitting at an angle where you can get the best lighting for my face in the kitchen. So, I think it just, Laura Mercier did an excellent job with the setting spray. It's kind of making me want to get a big one when November comes if I run through some of my other setting sprays. So I have a couple of small ones that um, I feel like I can use regularly and get through and then use bigger ones later on. So I'm impressed with it. I like the bronzer too. My only thing is $16 for like the size it is. I'm going to have to check, like I said, the other sides of my bronzers and see if that's, you know, a normal standard size. Because I don't know. I just thought $15.99 was kind of high. But the formula was nice. It did do a good job. It was quite picking it considering I didn't um, dip into it that much. And it did a good job. Um, is there anything else we're supposed to be talking about? I've used this foundation before. This is the Dior foundation. I've used the YSL concealer before. So that wasn't new. Um, the only thing we're supposed to really be testing was the setting sprays and the powder and we did oh the blush yeah the blush wore off after a while but it's not a primary fluid blush so i didn't expect that much of it the highlighter um is a was a um super shock and i wasn't really testing that either because i had used it once before and you know i didn't expect it to last again i didn't expect certain products to last because they didn't have a claim of lashing like the blush didn't have a claim of lashing and neither did the um what's that other thing the um the highlighter so i wasn't really trying to test those what i was mainly testing was the setting spray and the bronzer because those were the ones that had claims and then i wanted to test the setting powder for you all so those are my thoughts so i hope you all enjoyed this video remember you all are diamonds i'll catch you guys in the next one be blessed girl bye